Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nandi. So today we are going to be talking about one of my favorite topics and I'm going to try to not make this video too long, but we are going to be talking about love languages and what your love language is, what my love language is, um, how we can execute other people's love languages better. So before we get right into this video, don't forget if you like this video, give it, give it a big thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe and also share this video with your friends. So let's get right into it. Okay, so I do have some notes with me because this is just a very, um, I, I was going to say lengthy, but it's not like a lengthy topic, but it's just, it has so much um, information. So I just want to make sure that I am correct. So um, love languages were first introduced by Gary Chapman in 1955, and he had a book that was called the five long with the five love languages by dr gary chapman so basically love the five love languages describe the way that she wanted to feel the way that she wanted to be loved and the way that she wanted to be appreciated so obviously there are five different love languages and depending on your own personality um and each person is different each person wants to be loved a certain way there is no one standard way to love everyone so understanding what your partner's love language is can help you just unpack the way that they want to be loved and understand their needs and their expectations. Getting into the love languages, the first love language. Also, if you don't know what your love language is, um, I will put a link on the screen um, that is a quiz and that is where I learned my love language. And then also I highly suggest that if you are in a relationship with someone, um, or even if you're just talking to someone or whatever, to encourage them to also find out what their love language is so that way you both are able to know how you want to be loved. Okay, so going into the first love language, the first love language um, I'm going to talk about is words of affirmation. Okay, this love language expresses love with words that build up your partner. So it can be something like compliments, um, something really sweet, doesn't have to be, you know, that long. I think a lot of people, words of affirmation are kind of scary for me to think about, I think, because when I think of words of affirmation, I think of something that has to be like something so like extravagant. Like I feel like I overthink this love language a lot. So I always want to give like a top tier compliment. It doesn't have to be that serious. It can literally be something as simple as saying like, oh, I love that necklace you have on today. Or your hair looks really nice today. Or you look so pretty today. Something as simple as that would be words of affirmation. So if you love compliments um, or love hearing, you know, compliments about yourself or love hearing, I love you, or love to be just reaffirmed um, in your relationship, then this definitely might be your love language. Now also on the flip side of words of affirmation, one thing to keep in mind is that if words of affirmation is your partner's love language, um, then that means that words are important to them. So if you say something negative or have a negative comment that you say to your partner, then that will probably resonate with them a lot more because words of affirmation is how they ex how to them they feel loved. So if you say something positive to them that makes them feel like, you know, warm inside, they feel like you love them, they feel like you appreciate them. But on the flip side of that, if you say something negative or something bad to them, then they will also internalize that as well and feel like you don't love them or you don't care about them because words of affirmation is how that is what they equate the love that you have for them too. So that is definitely something to keep in mind um, if your partner's love language or even your love language, if it is words of affirmation. Okay, so the second love language we are gonna be talking about is acts of service. And this is personally one of my love languages. Um, and basically the motto for people who have acts of service as their love language is actions are louder than words. This love language is basically when you do something that your spouse will like. So for instance, um, you either cook a meal, you do laundry, you clean out their car. Um, this love language requires thought, time, and effort. So these things are something that basically makes your partner's life way easier. So something that makes my life easier, um, 
I, you know, I'm, I've, I'm always down for an easy life. So anything that could make my life easier, that is definitely my love language. Now, just like words of affirmation had a flip side to it, obviously acts of service also has a flip side to it. So if you are doing the things out of obligation or like with an attitude or with a negative undertone to it, obviously that is going to make me feel like you don't care. Because again, if I equate the way that I am loved to how someone helps me out around the house or just helps me out in general and you do it negatively or you do it and it seems like you would just much rather be doing something else, then I am going to equate that to, oh, they don't care about me enough or so on and so forth. So when you are doing love languages, <laughs> when you are loving your partner in different love languages, um, Please do it with a smile on your face and upbeat and excitement and everything. Because, you know, the same excitement that you have for you and how you want to be loved um, and how you love when someone loves you the way that you want to be loved is the same excitement that you should share for someone else. Because otherwise, it just, it defeats the whole purpose. <laughs> okay, the next love language is gift giving. And basically... Uh, obviously, gift giving is self-explanatory, um, but the way that you feel loved is by receiving a thoughtful or a nice gesture or a nice gift um, from your partner. This is something that can be super small, you know, like the main part of this love language is to be thoughtful. It is not to get like an extravagant gift, like you don't have to go out and buy a car. I mean, but go ahead if you ball it. But, you know, you don't have to, it doesn't have to be something extravagant. Um, I think when... When someone says that their love language is gift giving, I think that just automatically makes people a little more reserved because I feel like they assume that that means that you have to go out and splurge hella money on like gifts all the time. And that's not it. It can just be it can just be something thoughtful, like their favorite candy or their favorite ice cream or picking up their favorite movie after work, some flowers. I mean, just something that is thoughtful, something that really lets your partner know I was thinking about you today. And obviously this is not to get confused with acts of service um, because acts of service is actually doing an action for that person or for that person. Um, whereas gift giving is giving a thoughtful gift to let your partner know that they were thought of. We are actually like flying through these love languages and I think it's because I talk at like 65 miles an hour. So the next love language is quality time, which is also one of my love languages. And I think that this is a lot of people's love languages. Quality time is where you give someone your undivided attention. And obviously that is probably one of the reasons that it is a lot of people's love language because who doesn't want to be the center of someone's attention? <laughs> so with quality time, that means that when you spend time with your partner, there are zero distractions, no cell phones, no TV. It is only you and your partner. So they get your undivided attention. Equality time can be demonstrated in so many ways. So, you know, that doesn't mean that you can't, even if you're just on the couch cuddling and watching Netflix or going on a Netflix binge, you know, that can be counted as quality time because that is time where it is only you and your partner. So if your partner's love language is quality time, your love language is quality time. Then on the flip side of this, you know, anytime that you get together with your partner, just make sure that you're not on your phone or you're not busy doing something else. I know it It honestly, it doesn't annoy me that much, but it is annoying when you are, you know, you, you plan to meet someone and you have this date with somebody or you're going to hang out with somebody and you hang out with that person, but you can tell that their mind is like occupied or they're always on their phone or checking their messages or they have to take calls or, you know, you can just tell that their mind is like kind of occupied. Definitely be mindful of that. And also I just think that is just being present, um, you know, too. Just make sure that when you are with someone that they have your undivided attention. And obviously if it's an emergency, like you can use your phone. And this is not to say like, you know, 
he can't sit there and text because even for me sometimes you know i would love to just i love to just sit there with someone and even if we don't have anything to talk about or we're just both doing our own things like just being together is okay but if it is an instance where you know that person is like trying to have a conversation with you or really just wants you to put away the distractions like please be mindful of like how often you are like on your phone um, and things like that. Just make sure that that person really has your undivided attention. The final love language is physical touch, which is also one of my love languages, which is also kind of weird um, because physical touch is my love language and I do like to be like hugged and stuff like that. Like I don't have a problem with that, but it's only when I don't want to be touched <laughs> that I, I question why physical touch is my love language physical touch um is where you are hugging you are holding hands you are kissing it is just some type of um some type of touch that makes your partner feel like you all are connected or that your partner loves you it doesn't have to be over the top like pda like you don't have to be in public like slobbering in each other's mouths just a small gesture to you know let your partner know that you love them, you're right there, that they're safe and that they're protected. So obviously, again, on the flip side of that, if your partner's love language is physical touch, then the lack of physical touch um, can definitely make your partner feel like they are unloved or unappreciated um, and uncared for. So for example, you know, if you go days and days without touching your partner, even just like a hug, holding their hand, you know, rubbing, like doing like a little rub on the shoulder, like anything. If you go days without physical contact with your partner, then your partner will all, will absolutely feel like they are unloved. While I said all the flip sides of these love languages, um, please do not use someone's love language against them. Like don't learn someone's love language and then withhold it from them just because you're angry so that is all i have to say on the topic as always thank you guys so 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 much for hanging out with me it is always a ball um and i hope to see you in my future videos